I'm thinking you're here because your air conditioning isn't working in your car right now. These sort of diagrams can be a bit confusing, so I'm going to try and draw this out. The most common refrigerant is R134A, which is being replaced in favor of R1234YF. Basically, all you need to know is this is the stuff coursing through your system. Starting off with a compressor or a pump, that's the item in yellow. Next up is the condenser, which is the part that sits in front of your radiator behind your bumper. Two more components, the expansion valve and the evaporator, which are the parts that sit inside your car in the dash. The only thing you need to take away from this is that this is a sealed system, and the system absorbs the interior cabin heat by blowing your hot, sweaty air through the evaporator. The compressor is continually sucking this low-pressure warmed refrigerant converts it to a high pressure vapor and directs it through the condenser where the radiator and AC fans do their jobs and takes outside ambient air, pushes it through the condenser, heat exchange occurs and the whole thing starts over again. So what could possibly go wrong? The first thing we do is check the temperature at the vents. If we don't get the desired temperature, we then need to decide whether the car has a leak, a compressor failure or an electrical problem. Well, the most common repair is leak repair. But in order for the technician to figure that out first, he or she has to hook up an air conditioning service station like this. Terry has noticed that the AC compressor is not kicking in, so he's going to check the pressures right now and see if there's refrigerant in the system. Recovery is just the process of removing all the refrigerant from your car, and the machine weighs it so we know exactly how much is taken out. We compare the amount that we removed to the spec on the car, and verify that the car is close to empty in this case, meaning we need to move on to the next step of diagnosis, which is either to use an inert gas, nitrogen, and fill the system, look for the leak, or to put a UV dye into the system and let the system circulate the dye and then follow the dye with a black light. This Nissan in question has two leaks, actually, one from the AC compressor, I'll show you that in a second, and one from the rear lines where a previous repair was completed that was really quite poor. Whoever did the previous repair on this vehicle put some AC dye in it for us, so we can easily see that it's got two very large leaks by using a UV black light on it. Unfortunately, this Nissan Quest needs a quite expensive repair as it needs the rear lines, that's what I've got in my hand, as well as an AC compressor. Ouch, this one's gonna hurt. I've also been using the Subaru for footage and it needs an AC condenser, which is the item that located in the front bumper area. Since we're talking about condensers, how about we take a closer look at this one? Now this one's obviously bent, it's taken an impact, but I want you to pay attention to the horizontal lines. These are actually the condenser tubes which carry the refrigerant and the wavy fins are there to increase the surface area as the air passes through them to give maximum heat exchange. So if you note, some of them are mangled and some of them still look relatively straight. The answer to that is actually pretty simple. The mangled ones are actually exposed in the lower grill area. All you need is for any size rock to hit one of those tubes and ouch, you've sprung a leak. Now back to the Nissan and we're ready to inject some oil into the system and charge the car. Next up we're going to talk a bit about compressors. They can fail in a variety of ways. They can have an internal failure and things could go boom. They can have a leak. And then there's another fairly common failure on a compressor. It's the electromagnetic portion of the compressor called the clutch. The onboard computer cycles the clutch. As you see, it's going on and off, engaging and disengaging. If the electromagnet in there fails, well then the compressor doesn't run. And if the compressor doesn't run, the refrigerant doesn't get circulated and you have no cooling. A common symptom of a electromagnetic clutch that is failing is a car that cools well and then all of a sudden has nothing and then randomly starts working again. The clutch can be changed separately, but you know what? It's not always worth it, so check both options. When we can't find a leak and the compressor and the clutch are good, we usually assume that there's an electrical malfunction. Now, there are other things that can cause problems, like expansion valves that have failed or a restriction in the system, but these three, they're the most common. If you want to perform your own preliminary diagnostic of your car, the best thing you can do is check the output at the vent. 
make sure the AC is on, maximum, make sure the recirculate button is engaged, and verify the blower is on high. Get yourself a decent thermometer and stick it in the main vent. Drive the car for 10 minutes with it on high and measure your output. The nominal temperature after driving for 10 minutes should be between 4 and 7 degrees Celsius or 40 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it's safe to say that no system is leak free, even right from the factory. All vehicles seem to leak a little bit over the years. When a car comes in that's five to 10 years old and it's cooling, but it's just not producing enough cold air, uh, we normally find that that vehicle is down 20 to 30%. So what do we do? Well, in the old days, you used to just jam some more in there and that was okay, you know, 30 years ago. Uh, now we have regulations. So simply topping the system up is no longer allowed. Uh, technically, we are supposed to remove all the refrigerant. We're supposed to weigh it. Uh, we're supposed to use a uh, approved method of testing the system to make sure that it meets the leak-free criteria. Uh, we have to condition the refrigerant and then we have to reinstall it and then we typically put dye into it. That normally restores the air conditioner to its original uh, temperature. Simple, but not so simple as it used to be. Anyways, thank you for watching. I appreciate you taking the time. I also appreciate all the comments that are passed along and that you like my videos. That's fantastic. I appreciate it. Anyways, stay cool and have a great day.